Okay, what's up guys? It's Brian again, and today I'm gonna to talk about how I set up my camera, my a7 III, for vlogging. Roll the intro. I'm just kidding, there's there's no intro. I haven't I haven't done an intro yet. Do all does everyone need an intro? Do all YouTubers have intros? So today we are going to go through my camera and we'll look at all the settings that I use for vlogging. So getting started, uh, we need to get a couple things here. So I'm using my camera right now, so I can't really show you, but I do have some footage that I will show you that is me setting up my own camera. Before we get started with the actual camera settings, uh, you need to get a couple things. So this tutorial or the setting guide will probably work best with the a7 III, the a7 R3, and the a6500. Other cameras, uh, the menu settings might be a little bit different, especially the a7 R2 and just the autofocus settings are not as good and just doesn't respond as well. So I'm gonna take you through those settings in a second, but first, you need to get your gear. So the first thing you need is your a7 III, obviously, uh, and the, or your a7 R3 or a6500. And you need a, a lens, right? So normally I shoot with the Zeiss 25 millimeter uh, 2.0. Yeah, Zeiss 25 millimeter 2.0. And I also shoot with the Sony Zeiss 55 millimeter 1.8 for that b-roll um, so those are my main lenses but as you set up your camera you might want to grab the lowest aperture lens that you have in order to get the best setting the reason being is that you'll always get the most shallow depth of field so here I have the Sigma 35 millimeter 1.4 and as you see in the video that I took yesterday uh, I also use the 16 millimeter 1.4 from Sigma as well. It is a crop sensor lens, but that's not the point. You're basically just looking for the aperture. The lower the aperture, the better, because your camera will memorize the setting, the lowest aperture setting. If you use something like a 2.0 and you have a 1.4 lens, and you wanna use 1.4, when you switch to that custom setting, it'll always go to that 2.0, which is not good. You want the lowest aperture at least the way that I shoot. So definitely get the lowest aperture lens that you have and attach that to your camera and then set it to 1.4. I'll show you again in a second. So you can get that separation, that depth of field that everyone looks for, that little creamy bokeh in the background and then the good separation of the subject to the background. So that's why I attach those lenses first. The other thing you're gonna need is an um, external mic. I had the Rode VideoMic Pro, the first one without the light croat, light caught, I don't know, without that, Anyways, so I have the Rode VideoMic Pro attached into my camera right now, into the mic input, and I have that turned on. So let's go into the settings, and we'll take a look at what I set everything to with all this gear attached. So let's jump right in. J jump. People do the swimming jump. It's like a, it's kind of actually not like this. People dive like, is that like a thing for YouTubers? It's like just jump right in, then you do the action, or let's just go to my computer, and I'll show you. All right, so to be the most efficient vloggers, our goal is to set our vlogging modes to custom slots one and two on our mode dial. C1 will be regular speed 24 FPS recording, and C2 will be slow motion 120 FPS recording. That way it'll be easy to switch back and forth when you're on the go for those cinematic vlogs. All right, let's go to the movie notch on the movie dial. This is going to default your picture size to 16 by nine ratio. If you have it on any other setting on the mode dial, you have to do a lot more menu hunting to get your settings in sync for custom modes 1 and 2. So make sure you're in movie mode first. I used to use manual to set my settings but realized it's much easier working from movie mode as it gives you audio information on the screen by default. Okay, like I said, the first things you need are your camera and your lowest aperture lens that you would use for filmmaking. I usually use the 25mm f2 and 55mm 1.8 from Zeiss and Sony for vlogging because of the super fast and accurate autofocus. But when I shoot films, I might use the 35mm 1.4 or 85mm 1.4 manually. So grab your 1.4 or lowest aperture lens and set it to the widest aperture on your camera. That way, your camera will always default to the deepest depth of field and aperture no matter what lens you put on it. For example, I set mine to 1.4 now, but when I put my 25mm f2, it'll automatically default to f2 as that's the lowest setting for that lens. It just makes the video the most cinematic looking, separating the subject and the background. Make sure to also get yourself an ND filter for daylight shooting, as these following settings combined with a low aperture will blow out your image during the day. Okay, now time to check your ISO settings and make sure that the minimum value is at the lowest possible value. 
This will vary depending on the picture profile that you use. For my profile, it's gonna be ISO 100. And now set your maximum ISO level to 12,800. I wouldn't go too much higher than that, especially for 1080, as the image starts to degrade due to the noise. In 4K, it can go a good amount above that and still be pretty clean, but let's just keep it simple for this run and gun setup. Okay, now set your shutter speed. You're gonna do one over 50 if you're shooting in 24 or 25p, one over 60 for 30p, one over 100 for 50p, and one over 120 for 60p. Your shutter speed should be double the value of your frame rate, basically. I use NTSC, so I have mine set to one over 50 for my 24p footage. This is for the normal 4K shooting. The settings you'd use when you're walking around and talking to the camera. We'll take a look at the slow-mo custom settings in just a little bit. Okay, now attach your mic input and go to your audio settings on page two of the purple tab in the menu. Set your audio so that it doesn't peak above negative 12 decibels. That's kind of the standard for audio and broadcasting. Different mics will do different things and give you different volume levels, so make sure you mess around with it. For me, I use that high bypass on my Rode VideoMic Pro, and I set the camera to seven. I also have my gain to zero on the mic. The lower the camera audio setting, while still reaching negative 12 decibels, the better. This effectively lowers your camera's internal noise floor and makes better use of your microphone's clearer recording capabilities. Make sure you turn your camera around and talk into your mic like you normally would for vlogging. Talk at a solid speaking voice and make sure it doesn't blow out too much when you get louder for those exciting moments. Let's set your picture profile. I personally use the EOS HD C-Log profile with some adjustments. I also used to use the EOS HD S-Log profile. I can't really show you the settings as you guys have to buy those settings yourself and see and test it for yourself. Anyways, put whatever settings you want and set it to PP1. Adjust the settings however you want and then copy those settings to PP2. You want that picture to remain as similar as possible. However, if you are using the EOS HD C-Log profile or S-Log profile, whatever the profile actually says, keep that detail at zero. The first profile will be for your 4K 24 FPS filming, and the second profile will be for your 1080 120 FPS filming. That detail setting will keep your images sharp while shooting in slow motion. It's a problem commonly found with Sony cameras when you're shooting in slow motion. I wanna give a shout out to Cody Blue, also on YouTube for that tip. It was really helpful and definitely got my images sharper for my 120 FPS filming. I'll link his video below as well for reference if you guys wanna check out his settings. Okay, we're gonna head into the menu purple tab which is the second and usually the video tab, and just go down the list. So exposure mode, I'm on manual exposure. And for S and Q, I don't really worry about, I don't set any of that because we have our own slow motion mode that we're gonna set up in just a bit. Okay, so for your file format, you're gonna use XAVCS at 4K, and your record setting will be 24P at 100 megabits per second. Again, S and Q settings I don't mess with, and proxy recording will be off for now. On the second page, your AF drive speed will be normal, and your AF track sensitivity will be standard. This kind of gives you that smooth and more cinematic uh, focus pulling. Your auto slow shutter will be off, and your audio recording, of course, will be on with that audio recording level that we mentioned before. Again, mine's set on seven. Audio level display should be on, so you can monitor that audio. And then moving on to page three, audio out timing is live. Wind noise reduction will be off. You don't want anything messing with your files before you get to mess with them in post. Marker display I have off and marker settings are also off because I have marker settings off. You can mess with that if you want. Video light mode I never really mess with, just kept it on power link. The movie with shutter button is up to you. I use the movie record button up top and I don't really use the shutter button nor would I want to. I don't want to accidentally bump it, but that's up to you. Okay, that's about it. So now you wanna to go to your page three of the red tab up top or your photos page in the menu. And now you should record your settings with that memory option to C1. Now that you've done that, we can set your settings to C2. For your C2 settings, we have to do three things. First, we have to change your picture profile to PP2. That should already be set from before and all we need to do is switch it over from PP1 to PP2. Next, change your shutter speed to match the frame rate. You wanna set your shutter speed to one over 200 for 100 FPS recording and one over 250 for 120 FPS recording. Again, basically doubling your frame rate. I personally use NTSC just to get that extra 20 FPS, but I'm not entirely sure that that actually matters. If you use PAL, I'm sure it's fine as well. 
Okay, and third, change your record mode on the first page of the purple tab to XAVCS HD and then 120 FPS at 100 megabits per second. Now go back to that red tab and go to page three and record your C2 settings with the memory option. And folks, that's basically it. It's that simple. I also forgot to record the ending again. It's just something that I do. I always get too excited about the beginning and the actual content of the video and I just forgot. That's why I look different because I forgot to do the ending of the video. Anyways, I also do want to know why I shoot in 4K as opposed to 1080. I feel like it's for the same reason that other YouTubers do as well, although we do upload in 1080 for the most part. Uh, the 4K just gives us that extra resolution, that extra sharpness, and just that extra picture quality in general that lets us reframe or resize or just play with the picture a little bit more and have a little more data as opposed to just having a 1080p file. You can definitely stretch that 4K profile a lot more than you can with the 1080p profile, especially on the Sonys. And I also wanted to mention that a lot of people say that this camera isn't really for vlogging, no one's gonna use this camera for vlogging or anything like that, but I kind of disagree with that. I felt like because I had that screen when I had my Canon G7X, because I had that flip out screen, I always ended up looking at myself way too much. And then when I did vlog with the G7X, I ended up flipping the screen back because I didn't want to look at the screen so much. I would always look up at the screen instead of looking at the actual lens at you guys. So that part doesn't really bother me in terms of the vlogging setup. Although for talking head stuff like this or for product reviews, it definitely helps to have an external monitor or just that flip out screen like the GH5 or other cameras have. Um, but personally for vlogging, I feel like if you're getting this camera for vlogging or for video like this, it shouldn't really bother you so much that it doesn't have a flip out screen. It's okay for framing, but when you have a wide lens like a 24, 25 millimeter, or sometimes people have even wider, uh, 20 millimeters or 18 millimeters, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, you kind of just get everything in focus and there's a little bit of blur in the background. It's perfect when I hold my hand out uh, for vlogging. So. I feel like the flip out screen shouldn't deter you from getting this camera for vlogging. I just feel that talking to the camera naturally like this as if it was a face to face conversation with someone just gives a more genuine vlogging experience. It kind of makes it more personable, I guess. I guess as personable as talking to a camera can be. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about my setup for vlogging and if it helped you with your vlogging. If the custom setup with the knob turned to one or two will speed up your vlogging experience, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what your vlogging settings are and maybe some suggestions if you think I should change some of my vlogging settings as well. And just let me know your general experiences with vlogging on the a7 III or maybe the a7R III. I hope my settings helped you guys get started. For those of you who haven't really gone through all the menu settings too much, it's actually not too bad. Uh, the vlogging setup that I have here doesn't really go through too many of the menu items, so I feel like it really isn't too bad. If this helped you get started on your vlogging and traveling adventures, let me know in the comments down below. Leave me a like, leave me a dislike, whatever you need to do, and definitely subscribe for more content coming soon. I've got lens reviews and adapter reviews and things like that going on with this camera. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys next time. Ooh. <laughs>